Badgers are rather special animals and they're ghostly quiet. I have tried to train myself when I walk through the woods that I close my eyes and try and smell the world around me. Every now and then I can smell a badger latrine, for example, and uh, then I always think, wow, I'm really good. I smelled where the badgers have the latrine. And then somehow I think, no, I'm actually really bad because a badger could discern so much more information from this smell than I can. Badgers don't really make very much noise. Males will growl, they grumble, they go, mm. but cubs are the ones that really vocalise. They've got this very distinct sound, they kicker. And they go, so if you're badger watching and you can't really see over the nettles, but you hear this, that's a really distinctive way of knowing that cubs are around. frequently asked question that the public and even colleagues often ask is why do you study badgers? And the answer that we like to give is that we don't study badgers, we study ecology and we use badgers as a brilliant model species for doing that. What we're interested in is questions about how the species is distributed, things that affect their abundance, how they respond to climate change, diseases, threats and that sort of thing. And because they're so easy to work with, we can trap large numbers, get good data, they make a great model species. The Badger Project started in, in 1987. Uh, we catch, on average, between 400 and 500 badgers a year. Each badger gets an examination of about 60 variables. So when we catch a badger, we try and get as many different aspects of its biology as possible. So we have about a third of a million cells of data about the white and badger population. We can literally find the whole picture of the white and badger population as a family tree, if you like. And we can therefore start to understand what is it that dictates when you're a little badger? Are you going to grow up successfully or less successfully? And I think it's a pretty amazing thing. A controversial badger call is finally underway to try to... This is something that's been debated by politicians for years. Over the years, realising in the mid-70s that there was a link between places where there was TB in badgers and the worst outbreaks of TB in cattle, there's been attempts to control badgers, it's a euphemism for killing them, to reduce their numbers in the hope that that would reduce the spread of the disease to cattle. And for the most part, it simply hasn't worked. What we have discovered is their society is very complicated. And if you start disrupting that society, actually a consequence can be that the disease spreads faster in the chaotic, perturbed society than it did in the undisturbed one. So there's been an unintended, perverse consequence. Now, let me be clear. It's easy to say, oh, policymakers have made a big mistake. Actually, this is a really difficult problem. But what I am saying is that if badgers are involved, you need to understand what makes them tick and how they are a reflection of their ecology if you're going to try and manipulate it to a particular purpose. Whiteham is magnificent because there's the opportunity to do things long term and there's the opportunity to interpret what you discover alongside other long-term activities and come to think of it, we've scarcely got started. <laughs>